Bike Kaitep, uh, Kenton Thomas Kiskwes. Um, today I'm going to be sharing a story and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, about the connection between land and, and the stories and the plants. Um, I, I, but before I do, I'd just like to uh, take the time to acknowledge that we are, that I am standing on the unceded territory of the Sequaquemakulu, the traditional territories of uh, my ancestors. And uh, behind me we have a, a kukuli that was built by my uncle Louie and my cha-cha and a few of her friends and they this was part of a summer project and they built I think in this area looks like they built about five of them three of them have since collapsed but uh, there's two two or three that are still remaining remaining standing but uh, um, my kia's and pa's or slaas are um, Dr. Mary Thomas, Mark Thomas, Herbie and Vera Johnny, and my parents are Phyllis and Jerry Thomas. And uh, I have a son, his name is Susep Sewell. And uh, um, I'd just like to start off by talking about the stories and the connection to the land. So as in my understanding, the stories are connected to the land because of the language. The language is, was uh, as uh, our elders and our um, and our ancestors say came from the land which meant that when they saw happening something that they would come up with a word for it like a flicker of fire floating into the air or the sound of a bird so as I understand it our language is about 80-85% um, um, verbs action words so that's why the language is is so hard to understand and and to get a good comprehension of it. And it's so diverse and unique. Um, so with the, the language came the stories. And from the stories, we developed uh, our laws. And this is from my own understanding of it. Uh, you're, you might, might have heard different, but this is the way that I understand it, that the laws come from the stories because the stories speak of uh, respect and interconnectedness and and our connection to the land, to to each other, to the trees, and in that, and in saying that, it means that we're no more important than the the trees. We're no more important than the animals that run through the forests. Um, that we are just part of the cycle and the system here on Mother Earth, and that we're not at the top of the food chain as we've come to believe in our in our lifetime. So that's a great segue into the story that I want to share. And this is an Okanagan story. This is where I heard it first. And uh, it was told to me by Richard Knorse and uh, Tommy Gregoire. And the way I heard it is the way that I'm going to share it with you today. And it, and it has a connection to uh, Trudy's, um, Trudy's uh, presentation that she's doing about the plants. She's, she's going to be talking about the balsam root and I think a couple other plants. And uh, this, this is uh, kind of connected to what she's doing because, uh, because of that connectedness. So the story starts off with uh, the four chiefs, the four cookbees. And as, uh, as we knew them, or as the Okanagan people knew them, it, it was uh, Kinkaknam. Uh, black bear and uh, he was the chief of all things that, that live on earth and then there was salmon Skalout Nui who was the chief of all that lived under the water then there was bitterroot he was the chief of everything that lived under the earth and then there was a uh, um, Saskatoon bush our red willow red willow and red willow was the chief of all that lived above and uh, it starts off with them all meeting and talking about us, us to Galmuk, us, the people that were to come. We had not yet arrived yet. So they had a big meeting and they started talking and they each gave their opinion. Bitterroot was a little bit of a holdout though. He wasn't as accepted, accepting of, uh, of us to Galmuk. He told the others, he, he told uh, Bear and Saskatoon Bush and Sam and he said, I don't think they're going to be good for, for, for us. 
I think they're gonna do a lot of damage on Mother Earth and if you think about it when they do all their damage to Mother Earth who's gonna suffer the first and Bitterroot said it would it'll be me and all of the other plants and Red Willow listened to him and he said yeah maybe you're right Bitterroot so, but Bear Bear and Salmon were steadfast that us humans deserved the chance that we needed to be fed and nourished and we needed to be taught how to strive and how to how to create and be beautiful, have a beautiful existence here on Mother Earth. But then Bitterroot, Bitterroot, he, he said, Ta I, I, I still think that they're bad. So Bear stood up after a long discussion with, with Bitterroot. He stood up and he picked up his drum and he sang a song, he, oh, and it was a medicine song. And as soon as he was finished singing, he looked at the, the three chiefs, he looked at them and he said, I believe in these, these humans, these people, these Kalmuk, so much that I'm willing to give my life. And that's why I sang that medicine song, to give my life for them. And he, he, he lied down and he died. And all of the, the three other chiefs looked at him and they went, what happened? Oh no. So they started trying to revive him. They hold them and going, going, bear, bear, can get them, get up, get up. But he wouldn't wake up. So then Coyote and Senghokolo and all the other animals, they came and they all tried their different, different magics and potions and songs. Coyote sang his, his song, his love song, and he went, oh, but he couldn't bring him back. And uh, Deer, he tried to, tried to do his dance, his little dance, but he couldn't bring him back to life. Everyone tried to do their, do their magic and bring Bear back. All the while, this little fly was flying around going bzzz, and everyone was going, shoo fly, get out of here, shoo, shoo, shoo. And every time they would land on him, Bear, or the fly would land on bear they'd go oh no no you're not because they thought he was gonna try to put his his maggots into brother bear's body and they said you you get out of their shoe but fly was trying to get their attention he was flying around and finally he went finally he landed near someone's ear and he went i can save bear and they went what i can save bear and they said they he, he, that that animal person told everyone what fly just said he said he could save bear and everyone kind of laughed especially coyote coyote went oh <laughs> fly thinks he can save brother bear what he's just a tiny little fly but fly flew down and landed right on the tip of brother bear's nose and he started to sing a song he started to sing a little and he sang in all four directions and he, he acknowledged the sky and Mother Earth. And when he was done singing, Brother Bear popped up and he came back to life. And everyone celebrated Fly and they celebrated that Bear came back to life. But in that, in that action, they learned two things. One, that Bear, from that point on, him and all the other animals, the deer, the moose, the elk, all the ones that walk on Mother Earth, they were gonna give their life for us humans so we could nourish ourselves with their, with their meat. And Salmon was gonna give himself so we could nourish, him, nourish ourselves with, with, his, with his body and his meat. And Bitterroot understood in that action how, how strong of a feeling that Bear had for us humans, the love, that connection, that connectedness, that he was, he was willing to, to give himself. He, he kept himself, him and all the other roots, uh, the Indian potato, the nodding onion, the wapato, they all decided that they were gonna share themselves with us humans. And all of the plants did the same likewise, red willow and the Saskatoon bush, and they, they they feed us and they keep us alive and nourish us and let us live in a good and kind way. So that's the story of uh, how, how food was given in Okanagan Chabdikwa. And also, not, also they, they also learned one other thing, that even the smallest voice has a great impact. And uh, that's it for today, folks. So uh, 
um, stay safe and uh, practice uh, social distancing. Cooks Jam, all my relations and take care.